Welcome viewers, Guy here from FWS Welding and we're here today to have a look at Lincoln's newest addition to their lineup of power sources. Here we're looking at the, uh, the PowerWave 300C multiprocessor. It does your stick, your TIG, your flux core. Uh, it does your high frequency aluminum, high frequency start for carbon steel and stainless. So this piece of equipment here is really an all-in-one uh, power source. You can see that the wire feeder is not a secondary unit. Uh, your wire spool goes in here on the inside of it. Um, we got the package with it. This welder's actually never been used yet. We're gonna test it out today for the first time. But you know, it's got your nice stinger, alligator style. You got your Magnum Pro whip. It came with the foot pedal, regulators, all that stuff. It is a fairly new power source on the market. So I don't know how it's gonna behave. However, I know that it has some pretty cool features on it. So if you're looking to weld some 1 16th carbon steel plate, like in a T-joint at 600 wire feed speed, this guy will do it. I'm gonna run some beads in a minute, but before we get welding, let's run through the basics of this machine while it's starting up. This machine has push and turn navigation control and one button process control. This allows you to run through different options in one button. It seems like a better option over some power sources which have many buttons. I find it can be overwhelming. It has a 12 and four pin remote connection. It also comes with an optional sense lead for advanced settings. On the back of the power source, there's an ethernet connection for IOT and data collection and a knockout for 110 volt hookup. It also features power connect technology, which allows you to connect to 200 to 600 volts of input power without affecting the arc. We have this wired to a single phase 575 volt here in Canada. Now that the machine has been turned on, let's have a look at the front control panel. The front plate looks quite easy to use. There are four toggle switches for each process and four other toggles numbered one through four. These serve as memory for welding settings. There are four options for each welding mode. Starting with the SMAW process, click over to the SMAW type. You can see we can scroll through it and we've got a series of different options. Stainless steel. Got your soft, so these are your low hydrogen, 7018. If you want to weld on straight polarity, you want to weld a 6010 or a 6011 type. We got arc gouging, AC SMA is another option. Okay, we go into more options. We can play around the arc force. We can play around the hot start, remote control, and even have some more advanced features here. Language and memory. Over here we have four preset options for settings that we can use. All right, moving on to the TIG process. See here we have the TIG type, click on there. Oh, well, we've got our high frequency AC. We can use our touch start. Touch start on AC even. And then just our high frequency option. We can even go into pulse, square wave option. On or off, gas purge, and then even more settings here. Pre-flow, post-flow, types of gas. We're gonna keep going here. Now we've got the MIG process or flux core. Here we're set to FCAW or flux core self-shielding. Self-shielded, gas shield, manual gas shield. Again, more settings, more options. Right, let's have a look at our MIG process now. This is our GMAW types of wire, go in, copper, bronze, so on, aluminum. So 
once we've chose our wire type, each of these wire types will have specific options. So if we go up to using steel, we can choose our wire diameter, 035040. Our gas type, 85 argon, 15 CO2. That's what we use here. The GMAW type, this is where it gets interesting. So here we've just got regular CV. We've got our pulse, we've got our rapid arc, rapid X, precision, STT, STT root pass, and then smart pulse. So these are all advanced settings. Um, the rapid arc is where you could weld, you know, some very thin material at high wire feed speeds. So you can really do some cool stuff with this. Okay, right now I have the machine set to about 600 wire feed speed. And we're gonna go ahead and weld this 1 16th T joint. It's mild steel and it's, uh, what is it, cold rolled. All right, so I didn't do much to it. I tacked the ends. Let's go ahead. And I'm done. So I didn't play around with the settings too much yet, but that took me about five seconds to do. Personally, I think my heat is a little bit high. Let's turn that down to about 500. All right, same type of joint, let's go at it again. Done. That's crazy. So I'm going to continue playing around with these settings until we can get a perfect bead here, but I'm not burning through. I mean, normally 500 wire feed speed is, is good for, geez, up to half inch thick steel. So, and even higher. So I don't know what to say. This machine's pretty cool. After performing a number of welds, I was able to produce something very acceptable. I ended up having my wire feed speed at 575. The voltage is an advanced setting with a value of around 0 0.8. I'm still looking into how they come up with this value for the voltage. So we're learning about this machine as we go. We know that it has some advanced options. Uh, we know that it can do some really cool stuff. So stay tuned for more videos on this. Uh, I'll let you know what's going on with it. I'll let you know what's great about it if there's been any hiccups and how we solved the problem. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, keep your lenses clean and be safe.